we'll be exploring clouds and precipitation. So air can be lifted into the atmosphere in four different ways. The way that we've been discussing is called convective lifting. That occurs when unequal heating of the Earth's surface causes pockets of air to rise because they're less dense. In addition to convective lifting, some other mechanisms that lift air can be the orographic lifting, going up the side of a mountain, convergent zones, where global winds meet, can also be frontal wedging, which we haven't talked about and we'll explore later on. No matter which way we're referring to, air gets up into the atmosphere, it expands, it cools, and if the air temperature drops below the dew point, water vapor will condense to a liquid and form a cloud. Clouds are a collection of liquid water droplets and or ice crystals suspended in the atmosphere that are dense enough to be visible. Clouds are the result of air cooling to the dew point and becoming saturated. For a cloud to actually form, there must be surfaces for water to condense on. These tiny surfaces in the air are called condensation nuclei. They can be anything microscopic that's been suspended in the air. Most of the time it's dust, ash, or smoke particles, but it can also be salt, bacteria, and other aerosols. These provide the place for water droplets to cling to and to begin to form clouds. Clouds are often associated with different weather conditions as well as water or ice content. The three main types of clouds are as follows. The first type of cloud, which forms relatively high up in the atmosphere, in the troposphere, are cirrus clouds. They are high, they are white, and they are thin. They have a feathery appearance due to their composition of ice crystals and instead, instead of water vapor that's been condensed. Stratus clouds form in sheets or layers and cover much of the sky. They are almost always associated with precipitation. And the most famous and familiar type of cloud are cumulus clouds. They exhibit a flat base and have rising domes or towers. These clouds are associated with fairly nice weather and relatively low humidity. Now, how much water vapor is in a cloud? Depends on the size of the cloud, but a typical cloud contains about 13 million gallons of water. I know that sounds like a lot of water, but that would be enough to fill up a small pond. Clouds may occupy large regions, but they can only hold so much water vapor before gravity starts to pull it back down to Earth. Now, in the category of clouds, there's also dew. This is not essentially a cloud, but it's very similar to the process. Dew occurs when condensation happens close to the Earth's surface. We talked about dew point. We mentioned dew forming on grass and surfaces when the air cools down at night. Fog is a cloud that forms on or just above the Earth's surface. So the lowest forming cloud is fog. When clouds form, great amounts of energy are released into the troposphere. Per gram of water, Condensation releases 2,260 joules of energy, and I know that that doesn't mean anything to you, but a joule of energy can do work, can do something. So this process of condensation, of water cooling and changing from gas to liquid, can release heat energy into the atmosphere, and that can have effects on other things going on to drive 
weather events. Now let's shift into precipitation because it is closely associated with clouds. Precipitation is any liquid or solid water falling from clouds towards the surface. There are six types of precipitation and you've probably experienced at least four of them. Let's start with the most obvious, rain. Now rain will occur when the cloud forms with water vapor that's above 32 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the freezing point of water. So if it's above 32 degrees Fahrenheit, liquid droplets of water will form. Now for it to be considered rain, the droplets have to be bigger than 0.2 millimeters. If the droplets are smaller than 0.2 millimeters, we call that drizzle. All right, much smaller rain droplets. Snow uh, occur, occurs when up in the clouds or up in the upper atmosphere. The temperature is lower than 32 degrees. So we have frozen water droplets. And they come down as crystals, which we call snowflakes. Now for that snow to stick on the Earth's surface, the Earth's surface also has to be cold enough to allow that snow to stick, to, to accumulate. If the surface is pretty warm, that snow will melt right away. Conditions that produce similar effects to snow would be sleet. Now, sleet is where up in the clouds, we have water droplets. They're coming down as rain. But as they get closer to the surface, the surface is colder than 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So those rain droplets freeze into ice pellets. And those ice pellets accumulate on the Earth's surface, uh, mostly conditions uh, that are hazardous to drivers, and um, becomes a really slushy mix. Now, freezing rain is very similar to sleet. In instead of it coming down as a slushy mix, uh, liquid droplets, uh, rain droplets, come down and they actually freeze because the Earth's surface is so cold. And because the Earth's surface is so cold, the freezing of these uh, droplets occurs on things like uh, power lines, on tree branches, and becomes very, very hazardous because that can cause extra weight on some of those branches and power lines, causing them to break. And the final type of precipitation is hail. Hail is associated with a type of cloud called a cumulonimbus cloud. And a cumulonimbus cloud is a towering cloud, sometimes called an anvil cloud, that's very narrow in the center, but wide at the base and the very top. And a hailstone will actually start out as a small ice pellet. It will be pushed upwards through uh, updrafts, they're called, and actually go through the freezing process, and then be pushed downwards by downdrafts to melt a little bit. And the upward and downward movement of hail in this cumulonimbus cloud will add layers. If you looked at a hailstone cut in half, you can see layers that have been added to it. So starting from a tiny ice pellet, this hailstone has been pushed up and down inside of a cloud and gone through the freezing and melting process, which has added extra layers of ice around it. So those are the six types of precipitation, and that ends this video. Thanks for watching.